on the S&P 500 on pace for record closes. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is about to hit the road, set the tout, well, Bidenomics or whatever they call it now this week, and take a shot at the Trump economy. Barron's Roundtable host Jack Otter joins us now. So, Jack, I, I would hate to be the person having to do this sales pitch, frankly, <laughs> but she's going to the Midwest, going to talk economy. We know in places like Michigan, they need a message to resonate badly. Given the state of the economy, do you think they're going to get any traction on this sort of thing into 2024? So, uh, first of all, I got to say that we tend to way overscribe economic power to our favorite candidate and blame okay. our disliked candidate for absolutely everything that goes <laughs> in the world. My favorite examples are one, if you look at a chart of anything over between the great financial crisis up to COVID and take out the dates you'll see the trend stayed exactly the same. Hmm. So if you love Obama and hate Trump, sorry, Trump did just as well. And if it's vice versa, same thing. Now with um, inflation, you know, we love to blame it on Biden. Well, either he's the most powerful guy in the world because he caused inflation in Brazil, Japan, Argentina, the UK, and Germany, or it was a total coincidence that they, you know, so a lot of it is not the fault of the president. That said, um, Inflation has come down dramatically. It's still not where we want it to be. And that is a clear headwind to them, right? The price of milk is the price of milk. It's higher than it was a couple of years ago, and it's going to be higher going into November. So that's a big problem. The affordability question, inflation, interest rates, et cetera, they right. kind of all ball up into this idea that I can't buy what I want at the price that I want. Sure, try buying a new house, right? right. Your mortgage rate is, is twice what it would have been a couple, a couple of years ago. So that is a big problem. Now, another factor, though, is sometimes direction is more important than the real number on anything. I mean, analysts will say that about stock estimates. It's also true for politicians. So if gas prices are going down into November, that is a big help. So much so that some political, you know, geopolitical analysts are saying other countries might be looking to do something in the oil markets, depending on what their favorite candidate is. Wow. Um, that's how important that is. But it's interesting because when you look at the stock market and you look at the fundamentals of the economy overall, it, it doesn't actually make sense. The fundamentals are not great. There is a lot of room for improvement. Yet we've got a, a Dow Jones that may close at a new record over 38,000 today. So to your point that you made previously about the candidates, Biden is going to say Bidenomics is working. Look at your 401 k look at the market and trump is going to say no people are expecting me to be in the office uh, to win the the seat and be in the oval office again and that's why they're buying this market at the end of the day people who don't understand the market or look at the charts the way you do they may see this and believe it's based on on you know a biden win here right which is both are not true it's not based on a trump win it's not based on a biden win first of all the odds are super close right now you know, I think Trump has a slight edge, but not enough mm. that people are betting on that. And also, look at what's driving the market. Half of the gains this year come from NVIDIA, a well, single stock. Well, that's right. You know, so that's so. not Trump. That's not Biden. That's that is people expecting AI mm. to be a super powerful force yeah, in the economy. That kind of leads me into my next big question. We've heard a lot about the Magnificent Seven, but I also hear it's been whittled down to the Fab Five. <laughs> then maybe Tesla and Apple haven't been so great. We're pulling them out. But is that enough to push this market? Because you really want a broadening of the rally to be healthy. Yeah, you, you sure do. And it is scary to have so much yeah. put into those. And I, I agree with the five, by the way. I think Tesla, <laughs> their margins are going to come down dramatically. Yeah. We're going to find out in a couple of days. Apple, great company. I mean, who doesn't love their phone? But I don't know where the next growth is going to come from. Uh, that said, yes, we're seeing some li signs of life in small caps and mid caps, which is really important. I'd like to see a lot more of that. I would be mm. tempted at this point to underweight those big names. I'm going to be wrong tomorrow and next week. But at some point, you know, this is going to slow down and, and the rest of the, either the whole market's going to go down or the other 495 are going to have to pick up the slack. Well, Jack, we really appreciate you coming on. And I want to get him back on because, Brian, I know that we were talking earlier this. Speaking of small caps, you have a Russell 2000 in a bear yeah. market. You're still down 20 percent from recent highs. But the S&P 500 is at a record. So you've never seen sort of a spread that that big. We'll talk about small and you're gonna another need, time. He's going to need a new name, too, because if it's Fab Five, it's going to be Fantastic Four <laughs> the next time he's on. And I don't know what you call it when it gets to three. Maybe we'll be yeah. the Fantastic Four for now.